On this episode of the John 1911 podcast, who's going to win the Democratic primary? Joe Manchin is a FUD. Do we have a bobcat problem at the range? And Bridget the Midget shanks her bow. Okay, good morning, everybody. This is Marky and Freeze, and this is episode 144 of the John 1911 podcast. How was your night, Freeze? Long and busy. Long and busy. You sound, you don't sound completely spent, but you don't sound as chipper uh, as you could be. No, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. It's been, it's been a rough week so far and it's only half over, <laughs> but, uh, it, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not near as bad as I was on my last cycle. Oof. Yeah. So, you know, it's, I, I know I, I don't miss those days working nights. So, I mean, I was mm-hmm. in bed last night by, I was up late. I was up till like 1130. It's like, Ooh, <laughs> you're still up from yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, hey, you know, um, I mean, it, it's, I'll tell you what, it, it's crazy though. Cause I look at all the, uh, all the, all the people that are, uh, I don't want to say my age, but you know, people that have got, you know, 20, 30, 35 years on the job, man, we're all, we're all falling apart. <laughs> it's, it's, it's incredible. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, it's, uh, especially, you know, people that, how do I say this and, and not, and not alienate everyone that works at night. Um, cause we worked <laughs> at night. Um, yeah. You know, people that live on the edge of society as a good rule of thumb don't tend to make it to 90. And remember, I, what brings us to mind is you were even telling me about there was a mutual acquaintance that we were both familiar with. Um, and, you know, I don't want to I don't want to slander the girl, but, you know, she's dead. And you, yeah. you recently found out she had hung herself. Yeah, and uh, I was like, "Well, I mean, that is sad, and I, it's, I really, it's sad to hear it, but it's not that uncommon statistically, you know, within the range of the, the, you know, the the traject the trajectory of people's lives that a lot of those people don't make it to ninety. Yeah, no, yeah, it, it, it's very true, very true. You know, um, how I know, I know three people that within the next month are going to go out that have to have surgery, <laughs> you know, and, and, yeah. um, and I mean, I'm probably going to have to have my knee cut on here soon. <laughs> you know, that's just, what I'm hearing. You're, it's getting bad. I know. So. Well, I got a new knee brace uh, that seems to be helping quite a bit, but you know that's that's a band aid. Yeah. So so yeah. so here we are, nine o'clock on a Thursday morning, and a bunch of these young people are listening to old guys talk about how they're all banged up and need surgery. <laughs> this is the two well, old guys podcast. You know what? Live to be my age, and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, I told you this the other day. I said, "Getting old ain't for pussies." <laughs> <laughs> oh man, ain't that the freaking truth? Yeah. But speaking of pussies, Uh-oh. you probably did not see this last night because you were actually doing something constructive like working for a living. Um, <laughs> my favorite senator, Joe Manchin from West oh. Virginia, who is a is a graduate from the John McCain School of uh. I'm gonna sit on both sides of the fence to be a power player. Um, you know, he's the guy do. he got on Twitter or he did, so, no, he got on, he's was somewhere, I guess, yesterday and he, and he put his finger in the air and he's detected which way the winds are blowing. <laughs> and Joe Manchin has come out and he said, and I quote, Beto is not taking my guns. And I'm like. Fuck you, Joe. It's like, <laughs> really? I mean, like, he's the guy that wrote the Mansion to me thing. I mean, it's just like, yeah. you know, yeah, he doesn't give two shits about your AR-15. 
Joe no, Manchin, he was, if you yeah, go ahead. Was he the one who shot the uh, the uh, Affordable Care Act? Uh, strapped it to a tree and shot it with a gun or something like that. Joe Manchin, when he was running for re-election or election, he was in West. I think he'd been governor, and then he was running for the Senate in West Virginia. And so West Virginia is one of these weird states where it's always been Democrat. I mean, West Virginia is as Democrat as the day is long because a Democrat in the 1980s is a Republican today. And exactly. so he's a guy that's like he literally, literally, when he was running for Senate, he took a copy of Obamacare, strapped it to a tree and shot it with a deer rifle. And that yeah. was his campaign ad. But yeah. let's. But pay attention. He didn't shoot it with an AR-15. He shot it with a deer rifle because he doesn't care about the Second Amendment. He is yeah. a FUD, and he will take yeah. your Glocks, and he will take your ARs, and he will take your fucking magazines, and he is a cuck. And I'm like, I just – I had to go after him last night. I tagged his campaign. I tagged his office. I'm <laughs> like, you fuckers. You know, because like, all, I mean, I hate to say this, but there were all these people like I saw it on Twitter. There were all these people that were like, oh, it's good to see somebody standing up for the Second Amendment. And it's oh, I mean, up. well, no, but, you know, it, look, in people's defense, in people's defense, this is how it is. Most people are not as politically attuned as you and I are. And so they pop their head up once in a while. They see something that they like and they go, yeah. Right on. They have no idea where it's coming from. They have no idea what the voting record is. They have no idea what the position papers are of anybody. And so they just think, yeah, this is just somebody stand up to Beto. And it's like this motherfucker is literally John McCain. He and John McCain were buddy buddy. And John McCain wanted to hand the baton off to him to be the like the, you know, the 51st vote or the 61st vote in the Senate to break ties and break filibusters because he wanted to be a power player. And, and, and Joe Manchin will take your shit. And oh, yeah. I'm just like, I couldn't, I couldn't stand it. And I did what I did last night. And then I literally happened to notice this. Even um, Ted Cruz's campaign on Twitter, like retweeted that because the, his office mansion's office put out a, because they had a, there was some news, some newspaper did a story featuring Joe with the headline "Beto's not taking my guns," and they did it as a you know as a press for themselves. And the uh, and the Ted Cruz campaign was Ted Cruz. I've actually himself did it. They're literally like, uh, like looking at this like, yeah. Joe Manchin's <laughs> not pro gun. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's Joe Manchin's idea of the second amendment is a 30 odd six to shoot a deer with a bolt action rifle. Yeah. Well, and here's the thing that may be his idea of the second amendment, but the first time someone uses a deer rifle to kill someone, he's against deer rifles now. Yeah. It'll be sniper. Because rifles. That's the way he slides. He is just Joe Manchin is one of the Joe Manchin is literally the NRA in 1977. Oh God. Yeah. That's exactly um, what he is. You know, yeah. he's a FUD, and that's – no one knew what the term FUD was until, like, you know, probably the last generation. But it's like you – basically a FUD, if you're listening to this, you don't know what a FUD is because we're getting a lot of political listeners. A FUD is somebody who is generally a member of the NRA, says they're pro-gun, but they don't – to them, the Second Amendment is not about self-defense or tyranny or uh, protecting constitution – uh, the Second Amendment's about hunting, like you know John Kerry walking through a field with a shotgun. You know, it's like yeah. this. Joe Manchin is a old fuck, I and mean, he yeah. is a nice man. I mean, I, I, Joe Manchin, and I, we've we've met. We'll just leave it at that. He's a nice man, but it's like this guy is like a dinosaur, and he's it's just terrible. And I'm just like, I'm not going to let him get away with that. I'm like, nope, nope. I even actually, because we had written a thing on, you know, you know, like the bump stock. Didn't he piss me off about Trump? 
what the bump stock thing was. It was like, look, no one likes bump stocks. You know, look, and I understand everyone's like, no compromise. But everyone that says no compromise is usually operating within the current structure of the law. So no compromise, but within the current structure of the law. Like my opinion was we could have used bump stocks to reopen the NFA. We -hmm. could have used bump stocks to be like, okay, look, bump stocks are fake machine guns. Binary triggers are fake machine guns. 3D printed guns are coming and it's, they're not going to be just bullshit guns. Eventually they're going to be real guns. So instead Mm -hmm. of this, fucking machine guns that you can't keep track of why don't we just reopen why don't we use this as an opportunity to readdress technology let's reopen the nfa get all this shit under fucking license maybe even make a new type of ffl license so gun collectors can can buy machine guns brand new like scars museums can get brand new machine guns for their collections and everybody can be happy and everybody can be a winner here. And it's, yeah. you know, it's just like these fucking guys. And so they fucked it up on the bump stocks. Um, yeah. And hopefully they don't fuck it up when, when 3D printed guns become become the next real big issue. Oh, but they will. Yeah, because we got to reopen the NFA. We got to get the NFA. We got to get rid of Hughes. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. But, you know... I don't see that happening anytime soon because no. no one's in tune with it. But the problem is, here's the problem. And that's not that nobody's even in tune with it. The problem is like, we got a guy in the white house, like I'm a deal maker and Donald Trump is a deal maker. Donald Trump, when you look at how he operates, whether he operates in the white house in the Oval office or whether he's operating with the national security council or whether he's operating on, you know, foreign policy or national security policy or any of this stuff, it, the, it, the mechanism that Trump likes to do is he likes, I don't, the devil himself, Trump will sit across the table from the devil himself and be like, let's fucking talk this through, motherfucker. What do you want? What I want? Let's see if we can't work, work something out here. But the thing is, Donald Trump isn't a gun guy. He doesn't know shit about guns. He lives in New York City and wears, you know, fancy Italian loafers and has a supermodel wife and drives a Ferrari and has a 737 jumbo jet. Nobody in the NRA even mentions the Donald Trump. You know, there's this thing called the NFA that everybody fucking hates that is actually becoming so burdened that it could constitutionally collapse under scrutiny. And, you know, there's all these gun collectors that can't get parts kits into the country anymore. They can't get barrels into the country anymore. They can't do this. They can't do that. There's all kinds of things that we could fucking do here to make yes. everybody fucking happy. Yeah. Oh, oh know, absolutely. I yeah, mean, I you mean, know, like, oh, like, Beto, yeah. like Beto O'Rourke comes out and he gets on national TV at a, at a democratic, at a democratic, uh, 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 debate and he says hell yes we're taking your ar-15 hell yes we're taking your ar-47 well then why isn't the nra which don't even get me started with that bullshit isn't on the other side of the argument okay all right everything's fucking legal everything we want everything to be legal they don't even make the point no they can even say all right if you want to have gun registration you want to, okay, you want to, they're like, okay, so you want to have close to gun show loophole and you want to do an app to do background checks between individuals and we're going to, everything has to expand background and all this stuff. It's like, okay, well, if we're going to do that, I have an idea. Everything's legal. And when I say everything, I mean everything. So, you know, goddamn, a brand new machine gun is invented tomorrow in Germany you can fucking get it in the country and you go through the NFA and you can fucking buy as many as you want as long as you pass the background check. Yeah. And yeah. We can but... start, you start over here. We'll start over here. Let's meet in the middle and clean up all this happy horse shit. Yeah. But there's look, the NRA is too mired down in politics to even to even go there. They, they wouldn't touch that with a 10 foot pole. I mean, they just wouldn't. Well, it's not in their just, interest. No, no, it's it's really not, and and that's a, that's a damn shame. But you know, eh. 
you know, I, I don't see any type of a solution for it anytime soon either. Well, I mean, you can is, you can have, sit there and go, go ahead. ahead. We have a no, we, have just, a, we have a president in the White House. We have the only president in the White House that literally maybe since like Teddy Roosevelt that actually could make deals. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like the next republic, like, OK, let's say let's say Donald Trump gets reelected. He's not going to be president forever. So he gets reelected. And then who, who's next? So um, maybe Mike Pence, maybe Mike Pence is like, yeah, I'm out of here. I'm done. So. The, the, the one that they're really talking about is um, Nikki Haley. I like Nikki Haley. She's great as far as I can tell. She's There's video of her shooting uh, uh, FN, ARs, and M16s out the facility in South Carolina. She's mm-hmm. a very pro-gun. And she's yeah. the next future. But is Nikki Haley real? Nikki Haley is a politician. Donald Trump yes. is not. Is Nikki Haley going to sit down and crack open the NFA? And change 922 yeah. and change yeah. all the shit so there could be so everybody can kind of be happy here. No, she's no, not. No, she's not. There's no. no grand bargains. And if we don't get a grand bargain with Trump, we will never get a grand bargain. Well, and, you know, look, I, again, you know, I don't have a whole lot of hope that that's going to come down the pike. But the truth is, if it is going to come down the pike, it's going to all hinge on Trump being reelected. Because it's not going to happen between now and 2020. Nobody, and look, that and, talks and to, nobody that talks to Trump even talks this way. He doesn't hear this. You think Trump has ever heard 922 in his life? Donald Probably Trump thinks not. 922 is a Porsche. <laughs> That's probably true. But you know what, though? He, uh, Don Jr.'s kind of a uh, more of a gun guy than than Don Sr. And, and you know, I have to kind of think that if Trump gets reelected on the second time, look, Trump's had a hard, a hard road. You know, I mean, the Democrats have been doing anything they can to derail slash impeach slash whatever Russia, blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm thinking if he gets reelected in 2020, and then look, and, and I'm not saying this with authority. I'm just, this is me just thinking out loud. I have to think that maybe if he gets reelected in 2020, it's his last hurrah, because, you know, obviously you can only do eight years. Uh, at that point, he may address some of these issues. I doubt it, because politically there's I, no payoff for him. Well, but you know what, though? Politically, does Donald Trump really give a shit if there's a political payoff for him? Donald Trump doesn't give a shit. Donald Trump doesn't give a shit about guns. So there's no incentive for him to even go there after he's reelected. But maybe with enough. But if there's a shooting, if there's a if there's a horrible shooting tomorrow by another crazy person that should be in an asylum, there will be more political pressure to expand the fucking government control on everything because there'll be a pay because you know he's got to get through an election year mm-hmm. donald trump you know here's the thing after donald trump's reelected, he will only do the things he cares about for himself for his legacy well, and guns are not up there oh well he's, you know but you know i mean yeah yeah i mean i'm not disagreeing with you but i'm just saying that maybe um you know he, Maybe a uh, junior can have a little sway on him, and we might get some uh, positive uh, push forward on it. Um, Just saying, Donald, it's a possibility. I, you know what? I've been hearing that, and like guns have been a major issue. Like guns are a major issue right now, and maybe Don Junior is like, um, yeah, this this shit that's coming out of Congress and some of these ideas you're proposing are whack. Maybe they're coming from Don Junior, but I have to go by what I can observe. And if Don Jr. Don, uh, Don Jr. is not doing anything, we're suppressors. Yeah, well, suppressors are not going to come off of NFA anytime soon. Um, I know. They could have if he made a deal they, on they, bump stocks. 
No, no, no. They could have. You're right. But all that, you have that, to do is make an argument. Hey, everybody, we're gonna we're gonna trade this for this and work on this. And by the way, suppressors. Even after you suppress a gun, it's still louder than a chainsaw. Yeah, I know. And 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 people don't understand that. I mean, well, I mean, a lot of people do understand that. But well, hold on now. The, this is a pretty simple point here. The suppressor thing is a pretty – this is not like, man, you know, this is like cold fusion technology. No one really understands how all this works. If Don Jr. is such a gun guy that he has such sway over his father that he can bend his ear, explaining that a suppressor, a suppressed gun is still louder than a chainsaw is not that hard. You, my point is nothing's happening here. The only, the only position Donald Trump takes – on guns is the NRA show or the NRA convention every year or other year he shows up and he goes guns are safe they're not going to take your guns as long as I'm president and then he walks off stage it's not happening dude we're in trouble here on this I mean if we don't get if we don't get during the Trump administration, I mean, it's going to be – I mean, I mean, you know, look, who could have predicted Trump? So maybe who could predict, you know, president, you know, um, who could have predict uh, – uh, who's the guy that own, run, owns InfoWars? Um, Alex Jones? Yeah, who could have – I mean, who could, no one could have predicted President Donald Trump. So maybe there'll be a President Alex – I mean, who knows? So, you know well, – so, okay, so Trump gets elected in 2020. He does an eight-year term. The truth is, if you statistically go by the way things are, a Democrat's probably going to become president in 2024. So statistically, unless, that is true. Yeah, statistically, it's true. It's not, not a guarantee, but, you know, if you look at the cycles, the way things run, statistically, that, that's the way it'll go. So if... If Trump gets elected in 2020 and he doesn't do some major changes between 2020 and 2024, if a Democrat gets elected in 2024, unless unless the socialist left wing moon bats don't, you know, I mean, get squashed down by their party, we're in 2024, we're in fucking trouble big time. Well, you know what? Let's talk about that because we're going to have a political conversation here because let's talk about just what's happened in the past week and what happened yesterday. Um, Anyone that listens to this podcast and follows Donald Trump on Twitter or Instagram or any of his official blue check campaigns will see that they posted up a photograph of approval rating at 51 percent. And that the reason that was important is most people don't really like 51% half the country hates you. People don't understand within, within terms of um, a political reelection for a president, most presidents roll between the high thirties and low fifties. Most presidents don't really, I mean, I have to look it up to be hundred percent, but like you don't really generally have, you know, presidents that, that stay in high approval ratings, or if they do, they don't do long. A perfect example is George Herbert Walker Bush, right after the first Gulf War, I think had a 91% approval rating. And he lost re-election because it mm-hmm. was a, it was a, everybody was so proud of the military and they were proud of, you know, you know, the, the malaise of after Vietnam was over and, you know, all that. And we had all the parades and, and Schwarzkopf and, and everything. And so, but, you know, within a couple of months, boom, it went back to the normal thing. Well, Trump, yes. you know, the argument against Trump is that he doesn't have, Trump's Trump's coalition was like, you know, and I've said it on the podcast before, for between 50 and 80,000 people that maybe made the difference in a bunch of states. And it's like he has to expand his his voting base to get reelection, because if he loses even just one or two things like that's why the election in North Carolina was so important. The special election it was like if Trump if Trump's dude loses that, that's considered a purple state. It's not a good sign for North Carolina. Well, apparently his dude won it, um, you know, and so he came out with this approval rating number of 51 percent. And it's like, look, I'm at 51 percent now. This is great. I mean, the, even even the even the the 
the technical people, the chart people are like, man, president's at 51% and the economy's not in the toilet, which they tend to go hand in hand. He's pretty, it's a shoe in for reelection. Well, so let's look at the other side of the argument. And here's what's been going on. All of the, all of the, um, all of the polls for the Democrats basically say uh, that, you know, Beto beats, you know, or uh, I mean, sorry, uh, Biden beats Trump. And then they say it's, uh, you know, it's, it's Biden. Let me see. Let me, let me make a list here. Biden, then it's uh, uh, Warren and then it's um, uh, Bernie. Right. And then after the, those three, so those three people have, let's, let's, I mean, they have like 60% of the democratic base. And then like the other people, like you can take, like it maybe 15 percent of the voters well here's what's happening everybody knows biden's in trouble and yeah. wall street is freaking the fuck out right now because democrats on wall street are like elizabeth warren has gone full communist she's a socialist she's basically got a deal with bernie that they're not going to attack each other and um you know because they believe in the same things and so they're not they're not whacking each other right now. But Elizabeth Warren is the one that's pulling in the crowds on her side of the table, regardless of what the polls say. OK. And yeah. what's been happening is um, the, the big money donors in the Democratic Party have been freaking out because they're like, this woman gets to be president. She's going to fucking wreck the economy and she's going to wreck all Wall Street. She's going to wreck all of us. And she has privately been going in to all the banks the past like 10 days, having sit down meetings with people going, look, I'm from the Northeast. I represent big money. I represent big business. You know, I'm not going to whack you guys. And so the debate is what's going to happen if Biden, if both his eyeball, eyeballs start bleeding, is Biden going to fade is it going to be worn? And do you know what? There's actually a deal. Most people don't realize this one as well. There's a deal right now in the Democratic Party. Do you know who they think? And this has been this has not been officially confirmed, but you know, there's a top and a bottom. It sounds like a you know that doesn't come out right. But there's like a president, and vice president. Yeah. The people that are really running the Democratic side of the arguments. Do you know who they really think are going to be number one, number two on the Democratic ticket? Uh, let me let me hear it. It's Warren and Cory Booker. But oh, here's the thing that there's there is they that is the that is what they're pushing for. And actually, they're even trying to say they're even trying to say, well, Cory Booker for president and then Warren could be vice president. It's like. This is this is another example of how the left is in complete panic mode because Cory Booker is a nut job, but he's not really a communist. Where Warren's a communist, they're like, okay, if we can't keep Warren out of the White House, we can at least maybe keep her over in the Naval Observatory, which is where the vice president lives. And it's like, yeah. uh, no, Elizabeth Warren is not going to take the vice president slot. She's got the number, she's got the money, and she's got the the. Uh, She's got the crowds. And, you know, hey, Cory Booker. Cory Booker. Cory Booker is not good at this. No, now, Cory Booker's a joke. So now, okay, now let's ask your opinion. The, take off your Republican hat, take off your Trump hat. On the other side of this fence, who do you think is the strongest candidate that they can put up? And who's the one? And if there's a different one, who's the one you would fear the most? Forget the numbers. Forget how they're. Don't look at the numbers. Look at them per. Like if they got through, bam, and you put them on Trump on a stage versus this other person, and then there's the narrative of the two people, and they've got the backing of you know their full backing of everybody on both sides. Who do you think their best candidate is, and who's the one if, in Austin? And is, is there one that you fear that? That I think you think most likely would Trump would have trouble with Joe Biden is what I, I think Joe Biden is the person you got to fear. 
I think he's the only person on the uh, block that could uh, possibly beat Trump. Joe Biden is very well liked in Congress, even though I mean, I like I mean, look, I just heard everybody a loves Joe Biden. Yeah, everyone loves Joe Biden. Look, he just made a gaffe the other day, and I don't know the details to it, but I just I just saw the head that he said if he becomes president, he's going to put 750 million women back to work. Well, you know, that's double the population of the United States. So you apparently know. he's going he's going to, he's going to shift a, a manufacturing to India. So. Exactly. You know, OK, but the point is, Joe Biden is very well liked. He's very well liked in, you know, in the beltway. Um, he can work with both sides. We know this for a fact. That's not bullshit. That is a fact. Um, and the truth is, I think the general public especially your Obama fans, the guy, the, the people that, that supported Obama for eight years with Joe Biden as VP, like him. Look, I honestly think that if, if the Democrats have a chance of beating Donald Trump, it's Joe Biden. And I don't know who the hell they would pick for a bottom ticket, but the truth is um, Cory Booker on the ticket is not going to fucking do it. Um, so here is here is who I think is I'll give my opinion on Joe Biden and then I will give my opinion on who I think is the most dangerous candidate for Trump. Um, okay. Joe Biden is good on paper. Joe Biden is a guy. He has a built in base of like the, the you know, the FUD, the FUD Democrats, you know, the UAW FUD Democrat. You know exactly what I'm talking about, because both of our families are that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. The, U, the UAW FUD Democrat. There's a bunch of them that'll be like, "Oh yeah, Joe Biden." And like he, he would carry. Like that gives him a 12 percent bump. Like he doesn't have to work hard to get. Where like Warren and Bernie are not going to get those people. So Joe Biden could maybe make a difference in Pennsylvania. Um, Joe Biden could maybe make a difference in North Carolina. Oh uh, well, West the, the commies. Uh. I think Joe Biden can make a difference in West Virginia. He can make a difference, but he's not – they're not going to flip West Virginia. Um, um, That maybe make a difference in in Texas and parts of Texas, but they they think it's probably going to – Texas is going to stay Republican this cycle. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing, though. Joe Biden – and this is – everybody knows this. The polls can say what – Joe Biden is – Joe Biden – Joe Biden can't do this. Joe Biden is going to Joe. They're literally. Have you noticed they run Joe Biden the same way they run Hillary Clinton? They keep her ass out of the fucking news as much as they can. Is keep the appearances to a minimum because every time she gets in front of a camera, she says something stupid. And yeah. they're they're trying to keep Joe Biden. You know, they're trying to they're trying to drag sure. his body across the finish line. You know, like what was his sto- the story the other day? Hold on, the story the other day was like he's at a pool talking about some dude named Corn Pop, and he starts telling a story that doesn't even make sense, and then goes on to something else. Did you hear the Corn Pop story? Oh no, I didn't. He's talking about he was a kid. He went to some pool that he was a lifeguard at as a kid, yeah. and was like there was some bad dudes here. And uh, there was this guy, Corn Pop, like Corn Pop was like a gangster, like a thug and (laughs) and, um, you know, carried razor blades. And like they then it was a we got to go hide in the basement or go have a fight in the basement and Corn Pop. And, you know, we had to get a bat and like and and he's trying to And the story doesn't even make any sense. And literally people are listening to this going, I don't think Corn Pop is even real. Like you may think it's real in your mind. Like I don't think you're lying. Like Hillary Clinton, we just think your your cerebral cortex is short circuiting out here. Now, let me talk about who I fear the most, okay. and I am this person. This person scared the shit of me, and the reason why I'm bringing this person up is this is going to be Joe Biden's VP pick. This was what initially what they were planning on doing um, until. Um, Tulsi Gabbard basically executed her on stage one night. Uh, uh, um, um, Kamala Harris. Um, Kamala Harris. Here's here's the thing. Kamala Harris is the one 
that scared me to death. And she still scares me to death because if she was able to get traction, if she was able to get, you know, Biden's voters and some of, you know, some of say, not going to get Bernie, the Bernie bros, they're kind of racist, but you know, get some of the Warren voters. She's got a good story. She's an attractive woman. She's educated. She's, you know, um, she's, she's on, she's scary. I mean, like she could, if, if she actually had the numbers, it would be a knife fight with Trump. And I'm grateful that her campaign, her campaign's failing. She's in single digits right now. And I believe they're saying that if she doesn't get an infusion of money here for the next maybe two weeks, her campaign's probably gonna have to fold shop. Like there's, there's people, they're just running out of money. They, they just can't, they can't keep going. And yeah. so, you know, I don't, I'm not, look, my fear is, with this election, if somebody gets the nomination, they could win. Just like how the Democrats were like Donald Trump, they're like Donald Trump. Pff, what the fuck? But, you know, the thing is, if someone gets a nomination, they can they can mathematically win. Biden gets a nomination, he could mathematically win. I wouldn't be happy about it, but we could certainly do a lot worse. Well, but that's you true. know, but if Bernie gets a nomination, he could win. I'm not saying Bernie will win. But it's like he, there is a chance he could win. Elizabeth Warren, I think – I go back and forth on Elizabeth Warren. I think the chances that she's going to get the nomination are getting, are getting higher and higher. Um, she is – she's – you know, she is got the – she's got the mojo. The, they, the, they like her. The, 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 this way, the people that really know the Democratic Party – Especially the big time donors, the, the the liberal elites in New York and Florida and California, they're scared shitless she's going to get it. Which means there's a good chance she's going to get it. But uh, Trump yeah. running against tr- Trump running against Pocahontas, and Trump See, running, I, and Trump running against Trump running against she is so tied in with the big banks and tied in with Wall Street. That like the Bernie Bros will just they will walk on her shit they will they're out and yeah. they call she's it's the big the you know look you can zap Trump because he's kind of you know I'm just I'm a Trump supporter but let's kind of be within the term Donald Trump's kind of a little you know he can be a little dirtbaggy you know compared to like yeah. Mitt Romney that's a legit attack on him a legit attack on Elizabeth Warren if she is a complete hypocrite. You know, she, every every fucking two weeks, she's got some new trillion dollar giveaway program to try to see if people she, will, will love her. And she yeah. she's also in with these banks and doesn't know how to pay for any of this shit. Yeah. This is this yeah. is this is going to be uh, this is going to be one hell of an election. Because I don't it think will. I don't know if Biden's going to make it. Well, I, you know, I don't know if he will. I mean, but to be honest with you, I mean, I'm looking at the uh, Democrat lineup and I'm not really, I mean, I'm not really impressed with any of them. I'm not either. Because the only one that scared me is she's basically, she's done. Unless unless yeah. Biden saves her. Mm-hmm. Warren, I don't know. Like, here's the thing. Like, who would Warren pick as her vice president? I mean, she's not going to pick Kamala. She doesn't. I mean, I don't know who she, she'd probably pick. You know, probably pick Bozo. like. A, I mean, you know, I mean, she could. You know, she would pick like a moderate Democrat, like a Joe Manchin or something. I mean, I would be Joe Manchin, but because Joe Manchin was as old as she is. But, but you know what I'm saying? I mean, like, look. Regardless, Biden's not going to be the bottom of any ticket. I mean, oh, he no. ran the no, he no, 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 no. Yeah, no. Here's here's how Biden works. Biden is uh, Biden is fully pumped up on story and reputation. And if the polls ever switch, Biden, you know, they, they put these polls out, and it's like Biden beats all these people, and Biden, you know, like they're like all you know, like Beto beats Trump, and it's like you know these polls are kind of fucking bullshit, like Beto, really. But if, if there's polls start to come out, like if we're getting an outlier poll, but like, you know, like the real clear politics, average polls, 
And if there's a couple of those polls that come out where Biden is legit, like a number two, if Biden ever slips out of number one, within probably two weeks, his campaign's over. Because his campaign will just collapse. Because if he's not operating as the heir apparent like the the you know like the hillary one like this is this is inevitable biden yeah. there the, the people that that support him there's a lot of people that don't even they would love to work for a warren or a bernie that work in biden's campaign and that way they could be part of a warren or a, a warren administration or a you know a bernie administration or even a you know, a Beto administration, and they would it's like the the rats would just if Biden is not number one, he would lose so much support so quickly, his campaign would collapse, his money would dry up, his staff would dry up, it would it would be over. Biden's not going to fight for number one. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. He he might. Uh, but then again, Biden is also the kind of guy that his mouth will get him into trouble. Especially when he doesn't have Polyden in it. <laughs> did you see that? Did no, you see I, I did. Oh, God, uh, did dude. his teeth fall out? Yes. Okay, so they have these like these three hour debates. And like they had yeah. one on, I don't know if it was ABC the other night. And, you know, I, I don't know if it was another climate change debate. I didn't watch it. I mean, I just get the highlights. I don't need to pundit this stuff. And, you know, he's up there yeah. and they're talking. And so he's up there for three hours and he yeah. starts to talk. And it's like, you know, like I can't even, I, I don't wear dentures. I can't make the noise. But it's like, <laughs> I literally, I, I like, it was so bad. I literally felt bad for the guy. Like, I mean, politically, I'm like, yay. But part of me's like, oh, poor Joe. I mean, it's just like, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. hey, I, I want to talk about yeah. something fun, presidential, and um, I think it's super cool. And I, I doubt you heard about it, but it makes me so happy. Yeah. The Air Force is either in the process or has decided that they are going to put an F one seventeen at the Reagan Library. Really? Isn't that cool? That is so cool. That is so cool because they've they've mothballed them, but they haven't they haven't like truly put them out the pasture. Like most of them are still they can be turned all, turned around and, and reactivated, and they're still flying some. But yeah. you know Reagan, like during the Cold War, and like that was a that, the the F ones for the people that listen they're listening to this and don't understand the F one seventeen. Most I don't think when did first. There were rumors that the F-117, like at some point, like there, like I remember as a kid, they had like one of the one of the toy model companies had even come out with, you know, someone had a blurry photograph of something flying over them real quick, and somebody took that photograph and made a model of based yeah. off this blurry photograph of what they think the secret plane is, and you know the thing is, this Reagan knew obviously knew all about the plane because he had it in his back pocket ready to go to war. And yeah. it was very much a part of his administration. And yeah, I mean, the 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 F-117 debuted and um, was like, what, 81 or 82? Oh, no. The first F-117, I think the prototype started flying in the 70s. Yeah, well, well I think it became I, operational. Uh, I think it became operational. But no, they were flying the prototypes, I think, of the F-117, I think maybe in like 75. Well, yeah, but I mean, I'm talking about when it was introduced, and in, uh, well, I, in, in, I think it was like in like eighty one or eighty two, maybe. But the thing is, like we that. never like when they became operational, and they, they released it. But when they became operational, the public, we didn't know even know the plane existed. No, actually, we didn't. No one really. I mean, people knew, but I mean, it really wasn't until uh, the 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 first Gulf War is when it really became super public knowledge yeah they had um they had rolled one out or something and showed it i remember they did something with the b2 later on they were like yeah we have this plane let's go ahead and show it but like mm -hmm. yeah the f-117 was like the aurora airplane now there's this rumor of this aurora mm -hmm. which is the supposedly you know like the were, successor to the sr-71 yeah yeah and it's like you know we no one's ever seen it and no one even knows it's if, if it's real you know, yeah, why does a hammer cost $1,200? Maybe it's because of the Aurora. 
Exactly. But I just thought that was so cool. And if I ever do go to California again and I get a chance to go to the Reagan Library, that would just make me so proud to see an F-117. Oh, man, that would be awesome. That would I just be thought awesome. that was super classy. And speaking of super classy in 21st century terms, Donald Trump yesterday did two things. He had a big old press conference down in San Diego on the border about okay. the walls that they're building. And Trump is apparently that's going to be a big push for him in 2020 is they're, they're apparently really trying to build this wall and uh, across the border. And they've got these designs and, you know, like the thing goes so far down in the ground that hits, it hits, it hits rock in the ground. So you can't dig under it. And then the way they designed it, uh, you can't climb over it. They hired like world-class mountain climbers to try to climb it. And they like pick the one that was the hardest for them to climb and then, like, apparently it's even got, like, some kind of, you know, electronic monitoring sensors built into it. So, like, maybe they're not saying exactly what it is, but it's, like, maybe they can take vibration or audio or they don't know. Or, oh, and, oh, and even, like, Trump even made a point. Like, apparently the wall, it's, it's jet black or really dark. And you know this. And for anyone that spends any time on a rifle range or out in the sun – that if, you know, something that sits out in the sun and it's dark and colored all day, it's going to be hot <laughs> as fuck. And Trump even made the point, he goes, you're not going to be able to climb on this thing. It's going to be hot as heck. It's going to burn your ass off of it. And it's just like, God damn, nice. that's awesome. And so he, they did that. And then what was the other thing? I just went out of my head. What was the other thing he did? Oh, Trump announced yesterday that they're going to hit um, San Francisco with EPA violations, or not, maybe it's San Francisco or LA, they're going to hit one of these cities that have all these people that shitting on the street. They're going to hit them yeah. with EPA violations for all the shit on the streets. They should. I mean, the sanitary conditions in like San Diego and San Francisco are atrocious. I I don't know if it's San Diego, but I, I know it's in, I think LA and San Francisco. Downtown San Francisco. I mean, there's literally piles of shit floating around the streets. Oh, a couple I mean, weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, like they had. A, I mean, it's it, it's like walk into La Palma, El Salvador, and there's no difference. I mean, it's it's that freaking nasty. Now they they kind of downplayed this, but a couple weeks ago they had announced that they had detected, and it was kind of weird. Like I don't, I'm not an ep- epidemiologist, but it was. They had said they had detected pre-leprosy. Like, leprosy's mm. been wiped out. Like, we wiped out mumps and measles. Yeah, yeah. And now, apparently, because of all the shit that's going on down there, there's we're having leprosy problems. So really? It's like, yeah, it's like, oh. oh, man. It's like, it's disgusting. <laughs> it's disgusting, so... Um, hey, let's talk, hey, real quick, by the way, I got a, uh, I got a text from, uh, officer Mike and I got a staff member here texting me real quick on something. Um, hold on. Give me a second. I'll, I'm not even going to clean this up. Um, apparently Indiana is considering doing a limited bobcat hunt in some of the Southern counties because they're seeing so many bobcats. Don't fuck with our bobcats. Uh, I actually talked to him, and uh, I mean, they're, I mean, they're, I mean, they're, 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 they're talking this year. Indiana may do a hunt this year. You can shoot well, them or may, trap them. That may be the case, but I don't want any bobcats killed off the range. I mean, I haven't seen one, but I suspect that there's some there and I, I don't look. Um, I, I disagree with Bobcat hunt. I mean, it's not Bobcats in Southeastern Indiana are not to the, they're not to the coyote proportions. They're not really that much of a problem. I mean, coyotes are a much bigger problem than Bobcats. Uh, I think Bobcats are kind of cool. Um, uh, yeah, I'm I'm totally opposed to a bobcat hunt. Well, I don't know. I mean, the the justification the DN, the DNR gave is, and then I'll tell you what I heard from one of our local farmers. 
um, the, the, the dust, the justification for the Bobcats in Southern Indiana is that I guess they officially made them protected or whatever in 2000, but they're seeing yeah. enough of them now that they need to manage the population because in some parts of the state, the Bobcats are wiping out the Turkey and they're wiping out, um, the rabbits. Well, um, okay. Now, but, but the thing is, truthfully, and I mean, I know this from being a long-term Indiana hunter, and I've been hunting Indiana for 40 years. Um, actually, 39 years this year. <laughs> but um, what population in Indiana are the coyotes. Now the rabbits are kind of coming back and the bobcats may be kind of stifling that. I'm not going to say that they're not. The coyotes wiped out the rabbit population years ago, you know, and they are starting to come back. And then they introduced turkeys and turkeys have been turkeys are out of freaking control. I mean they they're just they're they're you know the the turkey population is just insane. Um but look the thing is, I don't, I mean, look, the rat, I, okay. The rabbit population is beginning to come back in Indiana and I'm not saying the Bobcat uh, populations, maybe not putting a herd on them, but I really, really question whether they're hurting the Turkey population. Cause I mean, if you look at the amount of turkeys in the area opposed to the amount of bobcats, I just don't see it. But, you know, I'm not the DNR and they do studies and they, and they're experts on this stuff. But at this point in time, I am not willing to say, Hey, let's take a bobcat. Of course, then again, then again, looking at it from a hunter's point of view, wouldn't it be badass to have a stuffed bobcat in the armory? So here is, so I have a couple data points here. One of the local f cowboy guys that we know, he I remember him last year, he was complaining that someone close to us can't even keep goats anymore because they lose all their goats to the bobcats because the bobcats are smart and get somehow get into the, where the goats are at. So there's bobcats yeah. around. However, I agree with you. We have so many turkey. I have a hard time believing we're being wiped out. They're being wiped out by the bobcats in our area. Now, I yeah. spoke – I spoke to the owner of Mitchell's range last night about this yeah. and he, you know, he's indicated he sees one fairly regularly on his property. Um, okay. But he says he believes that if they do institute a bobcat hunt, it would be West of him. So he doesn't okay. think it'll even be in our area. And that would be the big, the big thing. Also, the so DNR, if it's said, West, if, if it's West of Mitchell range, it won't affect us at all. Cause we're no. East of this. Yeah. Mitchell we range. wouldn't, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to, we wouldn't be covered by, it. but here's the thing. The DNR even made a point. They said, if we do institute the hunt, you're allowed to shoot them and you're allowed to trap them. But our rule is that every carcass that you get has to be turned into the DNR for them to study and look at it before they give it back to you. Um, uh, so you can do what you want with the pelt or, 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 or whatnot. But they yeah. also said that when they're doing it, depending, you don't get a tag, you can fill a tag. Basically it's open, it's open, it's open. And then they decide, bam, it's closed. So depending mm. on the numbers they're getting, because they don't even, they're still trying to figure out the management of it. So you can't even, you don't have a tag to fill like you could, or if you do have a tag to fill, you could, you know, it could be, you could get shut out. So you couldn't like shoot one or trap one and take it to a taxidermist to have it mounted. He wouldn't even be able to mount it until you got a release from the DNR because you have to turn that in. Correct. Oh, they, yeah, they want, they want, I don't make, you know what turn in is my phrase and I'm probably misspeaking. But there is a step between you getting a bobcat and you ending up the keeping it, and somehow the DNR is in between that. And because yeah. they are very, uh, uh, very interested in managing this population yeah. uh, deliberately, because they're still trying to figure out they're still trying to figure out what the numbers are. Um, they do. They just feel in some of the southern states that the numbers are getting so high, and they they seem so. They're like they're happy. They're like we are so happy that they're doing this good. 
because we didn't think they yeah. would do this good yeah. any time in the foreseeable future. But now we got, we may have to start whacking them back. But they don't even know, like they have no idea, like how successful the hunting would be. Like all of a sudden, five hundred bobcats get turned in in the first weekend, and bam, they shut it down. Well, because sure, yeah. They had proposed. I think they had proposed the bobcat hunt was going to be like. I mean, if I recall, it might have been months. It was going to go for a while because they seem to think that it's hard to get these things. So well, it was interesting. I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, it is interesting. Again, I'm not on board with bobcat hunt in the, at this time because in the areas that we hang out in Indiana, and I mean, I mean, obviously, we do not cruise the entire state. We only, you know, hang out in a very small area of Indiana. I don't see the bobcat population being at huntable levels or trappable levels for that matter. Um, I, I'm not seeing it. I'm not on board with it, but again, you know, again, I don't, I'm not saying that, that I know better than the DNR. I mean, this, this is their job. This is what they do. And if they say the population is, is big enough and they're a nuisance and not, not, I don't want to say nuisance enough. That's really not the right term, but if they say the population is, is good enough to merit selective hunts per County, then I'm not going to say they're wrong. I'm just saying that like in our area, you know, like, like, um, like, uh, you know, the range plus, you know, including Mitchell range, I'm not seeing, uh, I'm not seeing the population that merits that. I'm just not. The, the thing is, we make so much noise. I mean, we've torn up that property so much. I mean, oh, we're oh absolutely. Not, yeah, we're yeah, probably absolutely. Not, you know, so, you know, but it, I, it, was, it was an interesting thing. So, um, no, it, it is very interesting. And it's something to keep on the back burner for future use because honestly, if the if the population, you know, like if we've got like one bobcat hanging out at the range, I don't want to kill it. But honestly, you know, if if there's a half dozen or a dozen bobcats hanging around, dude, I'd love to have one a, a full body mount hanging out in the armory. <laughs> I mean, what the hell? It'd be cool. Yeah, I would imagine a bobcat hunt would probably have to be done at night. Um, probably with night vision because well, I mean, you will I mean, never I see one of these during the day. Yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, look, I mean, you hunt coyote, you can hunt coyotes during the day. They're hard. It, it's harder because they mainly roam at night. But I mean, I've, I've killed coyote during the day while I was deer hunting. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. I mean, you know, right. you're sitting in your stand. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's doable. It's, so we'll, we'll have to see how it goes. Um, we do have someone that was, is already inquired about possibly on the farm. Um, we'll see what the DNR right says. Now, right now, my vote is no. But but then again, it may not even be legal on the farm. So yeah, we'll, this- we'll see. We'll we'll see what the DNR says. Well, I just thought it was interesting yeah. Yeah. because here's the thing: even if it's not legal this year, it's coming. Oh yeah, I mean, look, I mean, if they're already making the decision that they're they're selecting counties that it's doable, I mean, it's only a matter of a year or two before it'll be it'll be legal at the farm, even and if also, it's not legal this year. Also, the thing is, too, this is also one of those. This is just like the the point I made with the machine guns and the three D printers. Is look, the reality is, we talk to some of the farm. I have a lot of I have a lot of contact with the farmers. And there's a lot of animals that are protected, but these animals are tearing up their livestock and, you know, they're not supposed to be able to do anything. And, you know, sometimes there's even a program where a protected animal kills one of your animals. And if you can, you know, get compensation or whatever, but, you know, the other argument is sometimes just on the back 40, Sometimes they just protect their animals and the, uh, and the, and the offending predator just goes into the woods somewhere. And the DNR yeah. may probably be trying to bring some of this out of the public because they know there's got to be, because they're had, the farmers are having such issues with the bobcats. They know there are farmers that are whacking bobcats. Just well, sure. Uh, look, themselves. If if, okay. Like if you're, if you're the but goat we, farmer, but we, but we, but we got, about... we got to get off the bobcat. We've been talking about the bobcat for like 10 minutes. So, 
Um, <laughs> okay. But, you know, but like the thing, it may just be like, here's the thing. I suspect part of it may be they make it legal. All of a sudden, a bunch of deprivation stuff comes in real quick and they're like, holy shit, shut it down. You know what I mean? Like, we just don't know what's going to happen here. So, but I yeah. wanted to talk about a couple of things. I don't know if you saw this. Did you see the video that's going around on the internet of the Malaysian military doing a body armor test? Oh my God, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So I'll, uh, I'll find a copy of it and post it on um, our website. Now we'll host a video of it. I can't put it on YouTube. They'll probably yank it down, but we'll, it'll be on the website. But let me describe it for the listener, then we'll move off because it's a video and they can't see it. So it's a dog and pony show, Malaysian military. They're practicing. It's like, like some special forces units, too. Yeah, you know, a bunch of dudes in black, whatever, I guess. I can't. I don't speak Malaysian. So, um, so they're all standing around and they're doing a, you know, it's like, it's like on a quad. You know, there's a, there's a band, there's a, there's a, you know, there's a, I mean, there's, there's a bleachers and people watching and it's like a dog and pony show. Like this guy's a terrorist, a hostage and whatever. And the, you know, yeah. the terrorist was like a major, like, you know, is in civilian clothes, but he's got some kind of vest on. And so he shoots, he takes a handgun and shoots the special forces soldier with a hand, I believe a handgun. I could be wrong. Yeah. I, I don't remember exactly. I, I, but, no, I, well, handgun, yes. but, but, you know, the guy goes down, but then he's, he's still alive and he gets up because I believe it was a real shot. And then the special forces soldier gets up, maybe even been a colonel and takes a rifle and shoots the, and shoots the terrorist quote unquote. And this guy, this guy, literally, you can tell like the way he falls it's a central nervous, like he just collapses like backwards and he's, you know, he's trying to move his head. And, and, the, and the yuckiest part of it is because he shot him with a rifle is you hear the bullet go pew, like that bullet left that man's body and went flying out into the ether. It's a miracle did another person. And it's yeah. just, it's horrid. It's, I mean, if you know what you're watching, you're just like, oh. Yeah, it was it was a brutal video. Yeah, it's it's not brutal from a faces of death perspective. No, but no, no. no. I mean, 1980s uh, reference, but it's but it from a from a body armor demo, it's like. Ugh. But I mean, I mean, yeah, you're right. I mean, as far as faces of death goes, you're right. It's it's not it's not eating monkey brains in a table, you know. Yeah, but so. death reference, but um. So, but I mean, when you watch this video, you go, "Oh, holy fuck!" But you know, especially if you're in tune with body armor, you know, it's like, "Oh man!" So we're gonna wrap this one up, and we always have to end with a like a good crime story. And there's a bunch of them. Like I got, I'm gonna give you the like, you know, uh, uh, Dutch nationals arrested at Area 51. You know, where they can't shoot us all, and the, and then there's like a woman cuts off her husband's penis and. Um, and then there's like a fake El Paso hero that I think had a, had a warrant out for his arrest and went to the white house and, and like all this stuff turned out not to be true. And he got arrested by the secret service and just all this crazy stuff. And like a man that yeah. even like forged, forged signatures on divorce papers and basically got divorced from his wife and didn't tell her. These are all the stories that I am not discussing today because, the, <laughs> because, because, because the crime story of the week, and I've never heard of this person, you know, you know, gratefully, porn star Bridget the Midget is arrested for stabbing her boyfriend in the leg. Now, oh, shit. <laughs> well, okay, first off, I have not heard this. This is fresh to me. But I love Bridget the Midget. Dude, I love this chick. Do you okay, know this so person? Yes, I do. Bridget the Mitchell is fucking famous. I get no idea. Yeah. She also appeared in one of my all-time favorite movies that no one has ever seen or heard of. I'm like, oh my called, god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Okay, what is it? It's called I Hope They Drink Beer in Hell. Oh, it's a I movie. heard of that movie. I love that movie. It's hilarious. It's funny. It's it's a it's an awesome movie. I suggest anyone try to find it. 
and watch it. It is it is an amazing movie. It's hilarious. It's one of my all time favorite comedies, and she actually appears in this movie. Okay, but you know, Brit the midget is awesome. So okay. she stabbed her. She stabbed her boyfriend in the leg, and so the big question I have to ask is: If I was her criminal defense attorney. Would I make the argument to the jury or to the court that, well, your honor, she wasn't obviously trying to kill her boyfriend because she stabbed him in the leg. And it wasn't obviously like a, a more vital area. Um, you know, obviously it could have, she could have cut arteries, you know, but it was, she shouldn't be charged with attempted murder or whatever, whatever, whatever. But would the prosecution then say, your honor, the reason she stabbed her boyfriend in the leg is the only thing she could reach? See, and I was just going to say, if I was the prosecution, my argument would be she was aiming for his chest, but she's only four foot two. <laughs> okay, so well, that wraps up episode 144 of the John 1911 podcast. If you want to see any links, stories, or pictures of the things we discuss, please go to our website, john1911.com. That's J-O-H-N-1911.com. Remember, it's all about shooting guns and having fun. Everybody, have a good day. See you later. Bridget the Midget. I can't even believe you knew who this chick was. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> See ya. I, 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 circles. <laughs>